Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to have some fun. we got an unboxing and a little demo. Uh, just because I don't want to crank it up too loud. People upstairs are home. Um, anyways, so this is the Alicia Strike Amp 8. They also have a 12-inch version, which is pretty big. It's actually pretty close to the size of one of my uh, Samson um, full-size PA speakers because 12-inch speaker in the other Alicia's. This one's got an 8-inch, and it boasts to put out 2,000 watts of power. So, I tried this thing out at Long & McQuaid, of course, and uh, I was actually quite impressed, believe it or not. I've tried a few of these things out in the past as far as um, um, actual drum amps like the Rollins uh, and whatnot. Uh, I do have those amps on my channel, so if you look up the title drum amp, you'll probably come up with a couple of videos that way. But um, anyways, um, let me just kind of put that up. So I wanted something small and portable. Now, although I do have my uh, Yamaha DTX-12 uh, set up through my PA system into my Big Bohemia Samsung speakers, um, and they, they put out quite a lot of wattage. Um, they're about, I think, 400 watts a piece or something. Anyways, so I want a small and portable so that when I do go back and forth to church uh, with the sample pad, um, that's what I'm going to call it, the DTX-12, um, I don't want to carry a big amp with me because it's a real drag. And uh, also it takes up a lot of space in the car, especially when I'm bringing my guitar as well. So I thought, well, I need something small. I don't, I'm not worried about a whole lot of horsepower, but of course I wanted the headroom um, because, you know, wattage and dB level. This thing puts out, um, they say about 129 dB. That is a lot of horsepower. Um, so, yeah, it can get pretty nasty. But, um, anyways, cranking this up in the store, we ran the dial to 2 o'clock, uh, which is basically number 7 out of 10 um, on the dial. And, uh, wow, I was amazed at how well it did. Like, even the 8-inch woofer on the bass kick, even with a heavy, throbby bass kick sound, um, I was waiting for the cone to blow right out of the grill, but it didn't. It kept it in there. Um, now, I will say this. There is a contour button on the back of this thing. Um, we are going to go across the features as well here for you before we get her all hooked up. So, uh, let me uh, zoom in on the most important area. Okay, so these are our, our hookups here. So, we have a contour switch. You want to leave that out. It sounds horrible when the contour switch is in. Um, with it out, it's fine. Um, we also have uh, ground lift switches on here. We have uh, two inputs for TRS or XLR. They're dual connectors. You have two channels on this amp. Okay, so channel one, channel two. Regardless of the fact, you're only going to get a grand total of 2,000 watts no matter what. Um, you're not going to get 2,000 watts per each channel. It's combined. So even if you use one channel, you're still going to get 2,000 watts is the idea. Okay. Plus it also has output, uh, which you can use as an output system as well with your PA. And um, This thing would actually be like the absolute perfect stage monitor, uh, especially if you want to be able to get your vocals dialed in properly and your instrument. Um, and yes, uh, we are going to do some testing with a guitar as well, plugging it direct in and see what it sounds like with my acoustic um, uh, guitar, because that's something that you can plug direct in. So um, it's basically like a, uh, a no, no frills mixing little console on the back. So there's no control here over bass or treble. You get what you get. It's the amp. Raw. Okay. Um, but... Still, very cool little amp, very small in size. Um, it sits perfect as a wedge, you know, so you can have it sit like this, or you can kick it up this way. It also has a pole mount on the bottom as well. Uh, so if you want to put this on a stand, um, it does support stands. Uh, so you can do that too if you require that purpose. Um, 
This is going to be uh, great for electronic drummers too, for regular drum kits. Let me just zoom back out here now. Sorry about that. I actually probably messed up that part for you. So again, um, let me, uh, there we go. So, so this is our bottom mount here for the post. And you've got a clamp on uh, bolt there to snug it down in place. It's got feet on the bottom so you can stand it upright. It, it, it's, it's pretty versatile. In all reality, this is nothing more than a regular PA uh, speaker that's amplified is what it is, okay? Except it is for drums, they say. So it's definitely gonna handle all your drum frequencies, which means you can also plug a bass guitar into this puppy and let her rip roar and you won't have any problems either because if it can handle the throbbing bass of a kick drum out of a drum set, it can handle a bass guitar input. I don't have a bass guitar to test that with, but we do have the regular guitar, so that won't be uh, an issue. So let me just get things going here for you guys. I want to keep the film just continually rolling. And uh, that in there. And I just need a cable. And uh, we'll get ourselves plugged in. Now I'm not going to go with a TRS cable. I'm just going to go with a straight uh, guitar cable input. And... Uh, Go into this one, and we'll put the amp at seven. This gives us lots of headroom. Now, I will have it set up differently uh, in the room eventually, but for the purposes of today's demo, this is how we're going to do things. Power is on. Okay, so because I am recording on a camcorder, take some things with a grain of salt. Um, having headphones on your head or, you know, good speakers on your computer or device will really help you out a lot to actually hear things better on YouTube. But at the same time, we have the limitations of it's a camera. And it's the only way to hear the amp anyways. You're hearing the amp. We're not going into the whole computer system because that doesn't tell us anything. So, anyway... down a bit lower. Still got a decent sound there. Like here's nothing, so you can just hear the kick pad. Now you can hear the, the actual through the amp. Alright, let's check out a couple of the other kits. That was one that I did up.
nice sound to it. Custom kit. So you don't have to have it turned up very loud to actually have a really good sound out of it, which is nice, and it's not vibrating the walls like my big Samson speakers do. I mean, even turned down low, they're obnoxious, right? So a lot of times I find I have to actually have my in-ear monitors on. Um, in order to play, especially later at night, and I mean this thing late at night, no, it's not going to happen either. Um, but I can use my inner monitors at night, but during the day, even until, you know, mid-evening time, I can jam out on this. Um, and get a good quality sound, play along with my favorite tunes going through the whole system. Right now my iPad is hooked into my aux uh, auxiliary port input on the pad, so you know, I watch a YouTube video playing along with a song that I like. I can do that or music, separate music, whatever I want to do kind of thing, right? Um, and it works quite well. So I'm, I'm quite impressed with the sound of this thing and the quality. And the size is perfect. It's what I wanted. You know, it's not that heavy of an amp. It packs a heck of a punch. Um, when we can get a chance where nobody's home uh, upstairs, we will definitely revisit back for, we'll call it the loud demo or something. We'll come up with a title for you anyways um, that um, you'll know that we're cranking this thing uh, right up in here and uh, then you can get a really good brrr. but at the store I gotta tell you we did crank it quite loud on a Roland B drum kit uh, so it was an actual electronic kit kit right like an actual set of drums um, but uh, I gotta tell you that really impressed me because we we did actually I had the um, the main level out on the um, drum kit at around uh, 2 o'clock and of course this is set at 2 o'clock and oh man the, the amount of throb this thing can produce is quite amazing for such a small package you know and being in a small enclosure too you know that was really super impressive um, you know and you do have you know your bass driver and then you you know you've got a tweeter in there as well um, just, just an amazing little piece of kit now, it's 2,000 watts peak power. It's not 2,000 watts, um, this is full blast. It, it's peak power out is 2,000 watts. Um, the normal running watts, look in the description below. I'm going to actually have added in all the specs from the Long McQuaid website um, of all the full specs on this thing. So you can actually see, you know, this is the real wattage at continuous level. This is your peak wattage. This is the dB levels at each one of those. Blah, blah, blah. Every bit of info they have up there, I'm just going to copy paste it in so you can check that out. Um, I only saw one video on YouTube and that was right from Alesius and that was a pathetic video that they did. Um, they need to learn how to do videos for gear because all it was was nothing more than slides of you know, drum pictures and stuff basically. You didn't actually physically see this amp or somebody actually playing through a kit on it in the video. And that was a massive disappointment to me because, hey, they could have been using the 12 inch for all we knew. They could have been using something that's not even Alicia's product for all we know. We have no idea, right? But that was the only video. So I thought, well, you know what? I needed a small amp anyway. I checked out this and I checked out a Behringer. Now we didn't even bother to fire up the Behringer. It was like four, three or four hundred watts out of it. Um, same size driver, a little bit smaller cabinet too, a little bit lighter weight, uh, which was fine. Uh, strictly uh, a PA speaker that will handle drums, yes, because they all do. Uh, they're made to handle it. Uh, but I wanted something that was geared directly toward drums and besides. This was only $30 more. This was $299 at Long McQuaid. And it was like $269.99 uh, for the Behringer speaker. And it's like, yeah, but this is so much better quality, so much nicer, much larger cabinet on it, a little bit heavier too, um, which is fine, but I'm not worried about that part of the weight-wise. Um, 
you know, both have pole inputs, blah, 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 to put them on stands. But this is definitely geared toward, and this has the higher wattage. Even at the main continuous watts, it's more than twice the output of the Behringer's peak. Okay, so the Behringer's continuous wattage is not going to be that high, even in comparison to this thing. Uh, so that was pretty good. And it does say Elysius drums, not that I have any Elysius drums anymore. <laughs> but, you know, thing is, I think it's a really great amp. I think it's well worth taking a good serious look at if you're looking for a drumming amp. Um, like I said, I have tested Roland amps, uh, the personal uh, 100 series, um, and another one, I can't remember which one, but like I said, look at my channel for drum amps, and uh, you'll see what I've tested. And uh, I really didn't like them, you know, and even at 100 watts, it sounded like it was maybe 10, I don't know, or 20 watts tops. Um, you know, it just really wasn't appealing to me. And you, you couldn't even run it into your main uh, PA system. So if you were looking at, at a personal monitor system that's for drums, and you've got to still run out to the PA, like even in church, there was no output for that. This thing has it, you know, plus it has your choice of XLR or TRS inputs. You have two channels on this, so you can plug in your drum kit and a mic or whatever you want. All right, so we said we would also plug in uh, a guitar to this, so um, that's what we're going to do next. And uh, whoops, <clears throat> should have shut the amp off first. That was my bad. I know, noob, noob thing, rookie, running on five hours of sleep. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, let me grab my acoustic guitar. I turned off the amp now, and uh, we'll grab it and see what it sounds like through here. Now, I'm not going to change the volume control output. I'm going to control all that from my guitar. And first, we're going to make the guitar off. the guitar just even plugging the guitar right in this time we're going to turn the amp off so um who wants a star rating everybody right all right nothing's five you know that on my channel by now hopefully um because nothing's perfect however uh, i will definitely give this thing an easy four and a half out of five okay it is definitely worth the 300 dollars canadian dollars of course it's worth 300 bucks all day long in my books. Um, it's extremely versatile. Um, it's very loud and very clean, even at really high volumes. And, you know, I had my guitar up to like 11 o'clock, basically, on the dial. And this thing is set up at 7. Like, I'll show you exactly where it's set up here so you know. That's where the volume control is set up at. So that's where our volume is set. Uh, that'd be, yep, this one here. Okay, so yeah, that's that's about two o'clock, right off, right on the button. 
Um, so yeah, definitely there. You've got nice heavy duty handles on either side to carry it by. You know, um, you can even pick up under here if you had to, whichever. Uh, power switch, of course, your power plug, you know, usual stuff. Um, the fact that it's a wedge as well is really nice. Um, and like I said, it would make an absolutely perfect stage monitor. Like, most stage monitors are basically acoustic amps, right? And um, it's great to plug your acoustic guitar in and it might sound pretty decent, uh, whether it's an 8-inch or a 12-inch driver uh, in your stage monitor. But they don't have the frequency range because they're generally a, a full range driver that is very um, tinnish and not a lot of control uh, over frequencies. And even adjusting the frequencies in your pickup on your guitar can sometimes be very challenging with those monitors, let alone vocals and trying to hear your voice properly through a stage monitor um, as far as your actual depths of your voice go and all that jazz. Where if you have something like this, which is basically an over-glorified PA amp, um, you know, uh, this is going to be perfect for you. So you can run your drums and your vocals through the same amp because you're hooked into the PA, right? And anybody else you need in your monitor that you need to follow, right? Um, I know in church our, our drummer needs to follow our lead guitarist, you know, needs to hear his vocals and, you know, preferably his guitar too, um, you know, but whatever instrument you need in there, you can have ported in there uh, from your PA system, okay? But if you're not doing that stuff and you want a personal drum amp for at home and it's just you doing your thing, you know, laying it down, perfect. You know, it doesn't take up much room. Um, like I said, you can stand it up, you can lay it down as a wedge. I'll probably set it up as a wedge um, because I want the sound pointed at me, especially from the bass speaker. Um, you know, but um, it's got a nice steel grill on it too. Very heavy duty um, cabinet. You know, it's, it's, I don't know if it's poly, polyurethane or what it is. It's some kind of a plastic. It's not metal, that's for sure, but it is heavy gauge thick stuff, so it's durable, you know. Um, and of course, it's definitely a metal grill for sure. Um, but yeah, definitely idealistic. Um, as far as 2,000 watts go, no, it's not 2,000 watts. It's, it's peak amount of power it can push is actually 2,000 watts, but it doesn't put out an actual 2,000 watts normal continuous power, okay? Uh, but it will peak there if required, okay? Um, and it's going to be for short periods, not long periods, of course. Um, but I, I believe it was like 650, I don't know, check the specs in the, in the description below, because I think it was like 650 for the woofer and... I can't remember what it was for the driver, but it, it adds up to, I think, around 1,000 watts continuous all total, um, but uh, which is pretty realistic considering it's 129 dBs as well, and that's a lot of decibels. Um, I can't remember what the dBs of my Samsons are. I'd have to go back and look, uh, but this is definitely much louder, and it's in a much smaller package, um, and actually, you know, honestly, I only paid $300 a piece for my Samson speakers. And this I paid three hundred dollars for, and yeah, this is two thousand watts. But something like this, um, I could have, you know, if they had enough of them in stock, I could have just bought three of these. You know, used two of them for PA and one for my drum kit, or or whatever. I mean, but I, I wanted something small and portable. I want the big Bohemus for in here, anyways. Uh, and they make great party speakers because you can really give her, you know, vibrate the plaster and all. But um, this thing can certainly throw some serious bass in. If you have it up loud enough, yes, it is definitely going to vibrate some walls, but at least you can get a good clean sound at lower volumes and still jam along, which is just great, you know, and if you're jamming on stage, um, it's going to be a great stage monitor for you because you're going to be able to hear your drum kit properly or whatever you got plugged into it. It won't be a problem. You're not going to get drowned out by everybody else, you know, as long as they have their stuff under control. Of course, that does make a difference. Um, but it does have the power to spare, so that that's really good. Um, as far as the rest of it goes, quality build and everything, it's all great on it. It's fantastic. So that's where I'm at. So it's you know that's my star rating on it. I think it's worth the three hundred dollars all day long. It's a it's a great amp. Um, it really super impressed me. And like I said, I've played with other amps too, not just on my YouTube channel, but I've also played with other drum amps in the stores. And um, this one really impressed me. Um, we got a chance to actually play with it ourselves and it's like, yeah, that is what I need. That is what I'm after. That's the kind of sound I expect. Um, you know, 
and uh, just fantastic. So I'm quite happy. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Um, but that covers my unboxing and demo of the thing. Um, we will come back again, like I said, at another point in time um, to really crank this thing up and wail it on the drum kit. And maybe we'll plug in an electric guitar and, you know, crank her up too and um, see what kind of real throb power we can get out of maybe the Les Paul or my Gretsch or something. Uh, but yeah, very cool and very happy with the purchase. Um, check the link below too for a purchase link if you want to buy one of these yourself from Long and McQuaid if you're in Canada. Uh, the link will be there for the page um, and uh, you can check your local stores wherever you are in Canada, see who's got stock. There's one more left in North Bay, so if you are in the North Bay area, there's one more left in stock because I took only one of them. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll definitely catch you on the next one. See ya.